but let's check out the Fuso starting grid. And Tim Slade, what a fantastic career moment for him. He becomes the 54th man in the Australian Touring Car Championship of V8 Supercars to claim a pole position. Isn't that great to see Stevie Johnson and Alex Primer on the second row of the grid? Then Michael Caruso, always good around these street circuits, and Russell Engle, look out for the enforcer. Tony Dalberto right up there inside the top ten. Drama for Lee Holdsworth on the track. We'll check out what that's all about as we continue to go through this Fuso grid for you. Jason Bright struggling with a bad back this weekend. Fabian Coulthard's alongside him. James Courtney makes his 100th championship event start. He's got the champion elect next to him. Then it's Tander and Lowndes. So we were talking about the guys inside the top 10 who aren't regularly starting up there. Now we're finding these guys in the mid-pack who this year haven't been used to starting there and further back. Greg Murphy, Pepsi Max crew, he'll be farewelling Kelly Racing at the end of this season. So too, Carl Reinler, as Douglas will start from position 22. Steve Owen, the VIP Pet Foods entry in 23. There's John O. Webb, former winner on this street circuit. So too, Mark Winterbottom. Michael Patrizzi next to him, and then David Wall and Tim Blanchard. So 28 starters, and Lee Holdsworth heading towards pit lane. Tim Blanchard actually had a bit of a stomach virus early in the week, and uh, he's fully recovered now, but it knocked him round in the early days. So he was a bit worried about having to pull together 500 Ks this weekend. Also, and Jack Daniels Racing, Rick Kelly, you saw the problem for those guys earlier on in the shootout when it, when it dropped off the road there. We talked about oil pressure. It flicked a belt off the oil pump. So they've done a complete engine change in that car. You should have seen the amount of work going on down there and the sweat and the blood and the tears, skin coming off, knuckles. But they've got it done and uh, he'll start yeah, from 10. Stay in, mate. Let him pull you back up. So terrible news there for Leah Holdsworth. 17th, he qualified and to wheel the Irwin Tools Falcon into the end of pit lane, day over. Uh, guys, it looks like, according to Ross Stone, it is a gearbox input shaft which is broken oh. now that... Yeah, exactly, Neil, that probably sums it up. Yeah, so that'll be when he's done a little practice start, start. loaded it up and it hasn't accepted it. This is a place where the entire transmission is under extreme load. We've talked and Larko spoke about this a little bit before on the whiteboard. We've got tremendous reliability with these cars that uh, the curtain drops on at the end of this year, basically this race meeting. We've had 20 years of V8 supercar technical rules that have evolved as we know them. And through that period, they've become more and more and more reliable to the point where we never really think about it. But this is one track where you do have to nurse the cars a little bit and all that gear is a bit vulnerable. It certainly is. A very important start. You see Will Davison got the car on the angle there. He's on position two, already angling the car to move it across towards the inside one, three, for two, turn one. one edging, it's Mark Dutton edging, just moving over there, over there, perfect, mate. wing cup up to mate. the starting grid line. This thing's got trouble written all over it, no doubt, out. because it's so mixed up. We're not getting a true representation of speed. Whenever you shake up the speed of the cars and put them out of speed order, you can expect fireworks. Temperature climbing towards 40 degrees. Green flag now, green flag now, five seconds. Downhill start, all or nothing battle at Sydney Olympic Park. Tim Slade, first time he's been on pole position as we get going for a scorcher. Russell Ingall starts the dive already down towards turn one. Good start from Will Davison. Stephen Johnson covers Ingall. Here comes one, so Davison leads him through. They're going to be too close on the inside. And Wincup somehow oh, plays oh, the oh. needle over the curves on the left-hand side. Well, he went down the inside and, in fact, wasn't on the racetrack when he got down to that inside curve. So it was a bit lucky to get away with that and not end up making contact down there. Delberto now runs wide at turn four. And pushed wide, too, by Alex Premer. Now he finds himself in a tangle with James Moffat. The circuit gets very narrow down here. They've got to be careful. Moffat goes through, single file. Oh. And that's Rick Kelly. He touches the fence on the exit there. Davison leads it through. Slay, Johnson, Ingalls moved up. That's Van Gisbergen coming wide out to our wall camp. So a very good jump and a critical first lap for Will Davison here. Look at Tony Delberto down the inside of Van Gisbergen at nine. Oh, crunch and gears into the wall. Oh, and he's no, taken Rick Kelly with him as he's tried to limp off to the side of the road. Rick had nowhere to go.
That's going to drop in. Okay, mate. You got no steering there. It's Dave Stewart on the radio to Shane Van Gisbergen. He was around the outside of Dalberto. It was a bit cheeky of Dalberto to run him out, to continue to run him towards the wall. And Shane had nowhere to go. And after it hit the fence, he got him across to the left, and then Rick Kelly had nowhere to go. So lots of drama. So aside from Davison at the front, starting from second, now leading the race. Oh, oh you're oh, kidding me. He's managed to get the medical car. Oh, I've never seen that. So it's had a steering fail, and it's great. The medical car always follows the field. He would have got... Let's have a listen to Dave. I've never seen that. So the medical car follows the field for obvious reasons. It's a sweet car. Clearly there's a steering fail on the Shane Van Gisbergen car. Safety car boards and flags. We have a car stopped online. Just exit of turn 10, exit of turn 10. Just hold safety car. It's an expensive car. Well, it's a Porsche Panamera and it's plucked the front off. It's actually damaged on the other side. So there is a a significant amount of damage to the front of that car, but there's obviously a lot of damage to... You can see that there now as the medical car comes in. And that is... Expensive. Expensive, exactly. <laughs> I've never... I've, it's blown me away. I've never seen that, ever. <laughs> the crowd think oh, it's dear. funny. <laughs> and Van Gisbergen, stranded. Safety car out. Tell you who else did a good job to get around. He's coming around right now. Is Jason Bright because when Van Gisbergen was stuck there and ends up going across to the left to Rick Kelly, I thought for all money that Jason Bright was going to run straight into the rear of the SP Tools car. It's a real shame for Shane Van Gisbergen. We know he's giving it away at the end of this weekend. Hey, Matty, uh, Dave Stewart from uh, SBR just confirming definitely it is uh, broken steering for uh, Shane Van Gisbergen. Bad news. <laughs> There's people saying it over the radio to drivers. Van Gisberg has had a collision with the medical car, and all the drivers are going, what? Ingle's yep. the one to watch here, and then watch Jamie Winkup as well. Yes, back in the pack car one. Watch him dive down the inside. He makes it four or five cars wide. He's five cars wide. Look at this. He's jammed up against the wall. He takes to the traffic island, and he gets tries to get down the inside of Courtney. So he started 14th. Jamie Winkup is now up to 9th. He gained yeah, five spots go. and so did Courtney grab three yeah, spots. Okay. So Jason Bright was just saying on the radio, it was a crazy move of Winkup and Courtney to be five abreast with four wheels off the road. That's when Dalberto got pushed a little bit wide and there's the damage for Gar Tander. Okay. So, as predicted, it's gone crazy already. You don't want to miss a beat of this one. We'll be back after this break. <laughs>
Frank, uh, where should we be dropping these uh, vehicles that are coming back on recovery? It's over. We've seen some of the most bizarre things ever occur in V8 supercars at this circuit over the last three years. And today, a new chapter, the medical car collected after Shane Van Gisbergen's steering went. So this will be the incident. There's the contact. Now, watch Jason Bright arrive. Look at him dive off to the right. But that means the poor old Rick Kelly gets sandwiched into the left. And here comes the medical car, which in a matter of seconds <laughs> is in need of an aspirin. This, this is a Porsche, and all of a sudden, whack, ouch, that's one for the books, one for the checkbooks. <laughs> Yeah, and boys, just to update, I've uh, been around and had a look at the medical car. Uh, can confirm damage to the front bar, front fender, <laughs> both uh, both right-hand doors. So they're taking the stuff, all the medical equipment, out of that car, putting it into a four-wheel drive, probably more appropriate. Um, the guy's going to work, and I don't think we'll see it again in today's race. If you track down uh, Neil Evans from Luxpec, can you find out what odds? <laughs> medical car coming back out. He's going to need new air conditioner, cigarette lighter, <laughs> FM stereo, <laughs> Bluetooth. Oh, Good reporting, Marco. So that contact uh, is being investigated between cars three and nine. Lights out, accelerate away from the field. Car six to maintain speed, six to maintain speed. And guys, just on a more serious note, uh, a couple of cars came through the pit lane there. Patrizzi for the second time. Uh, wall came through, as did... Uh, Garth Tander and had a little top up of fuel. Remember we talked about really this is a three stop race and you try and do it in two and you can just do it with some safety cars but they've put them in, themselves in really good position for much much later in the race so watch out for them. All right like uh, I said it before and you know we've had a good laugh about the fact that we've never seen anything like that but you really have to feel for this young man Shane Van Gisbergen. and uh, since our last event he has made it official the 23 year old but he's going to step away from the sport. Safety car in pit lane. He's um, basically had enough at this time. We hope to see him back. Let's hope that he's back tomorrow and ready to have another crack and farewell this game properly because he's a superstar in the making. OK, Will Davison gets him underway. Tim Slade is second. Johnson is third. Then it's Russell Ingle. So Davison's got a good jump off the restart. The top three have gone with them. And then it's a little bit of a break. There's a staggering gaps that opened up it. In our original start, because of some of the stuff that goes on in the mid pack in these tighter corners, the field spread was enormous. And that was a bad restart then. There was a lot of gap. I mean, just three or four car lengths in five or six zones within the field. So, bad restart by a lot of the guys. Russell Engel, for instance, a huge amount of ground to Steve Johnson. It wasn't as aggressive as it should have looked. And they were certainly pushing but just single file around there. It didn't look as as crazy and as manic as, as you'd expect from the first race start. Oh, big kick sideways from car 55 at Davey Reynolds. So, Dalberto, we said about the contact, black flag now for him. Drive through for that contact with Shane Van Gisbergen at turn nine. So that was immediately radioed to Jamie Wincup as well, so that he doesn't have a lunge at him. So no point taking a risk. Oh, look at David Reynolds down the inside of Jason Bright at turn nine, cleanly done. So Mark Dutton on the phone straight away to Wing Cup. Doesn't need him to get tangled up in anything. So Tony will peel off, transit the lane, and that'll stick him on the end of the train once he's released. It's a great sight. This where we saw Reynolds there kick out, but he was obviously bottling up that aggression that we were talking at, uh, talking about. He decided to use it down at turn nine. And he's continuing to go on with it. So Reynolds now up to 10th, Dalberto in pit lane. Trim two on the restart and press on as hard as you can. Serving that penalty. This is my fucking corner. Oh, Adam DeBore was in. talking to Dalberto there. Sorry about that reaction. 
Hodge, Will Davison, Leeds, from Slade, Johnson, Ingle, Prima, Caruso, Moffat, Winkup, Courtney, and Dave Reynolds, top 10. So that's Winterbottom now, up to 15th. Remember, he started back in 25th. And he's hunting down Dean Fiore. That's Stevie Johnson, I reckon, on the other side. Yep. It must be. So Stephen Johnson parked on the left-hand side of the circuit, a little bit further back. Which will potentially trigger a safety car because I doubt whether they'll want to leave a car sitting there. Probably right. It's, although it's offline, it's pretty narrow down there as Winterbottom fires up the inside of Dean Fiore at turn eight. That's the car we're talking about. This is quite a narrow section down into turn five. And what a shame. That's Junior a starting in third. Yeah, from that. Car and circuit. There we go. So uh, Peter's STP safety car deployed again. Can't have a car stationary on the track like that. So Stephen stays in the car for him to be now safely removed. We thought he might be a bit of a chance today. He's typically very good in these longer races of keeping his nose clean and with a bit of speed and near the front of the field. Something has gone amiss with the Jim Beam car 17. So it's Davis and Slade, Ingle. Kremer, good, good start for Alex Caruso, his teammate. Then Moffat, win cup up to seventh. That's a great recovery. Courtney, Reynolds and Bright. That's your 10. And Greg Murphy in 11th after starting from 19th. Know, so there's plenty of movers and so shakers. It's just on the exit of uh, turn four there for Stephen Johnson. The safety car is on the circuit. A lot of action already at the Sydney Telstra 500. Welcome back. The STP Petters safety car is still in control of the field after uh, Stephen Johnson's prone car caused that interference uh, with 67 laps still to go. What's the update, Brett? Uh, it's not good, Matt. Look, they've had an alternator problem. They had it on the grid. They dropped a new battery and it lasted three laps and it's all over. Wow. So from third on the grid to the back of the truck heading home. Quite a number of people are using the opportunity now to come in and grab fuel, as we heard Larko describe before. This is David Ward and the Wilson security entry, and they're just ensuring that they can run richer throughout a longer period of the race now. 
So there's no real penalty in that. You lose a bit of track position because you go to the back of the queue, but the field's compressed. Yeah, Neil and Wall is really playing that card hard. That's twice he's been through the lane now. So that's a couple of them just making sure they're, they're topped up. And it's interesting, a couple of those little failures, we just saw that battery, possibly an alternator failure, I'd say, on Stevie Johnson's car. We saw that input shaft on Holdsworth's car. You've got to remember, we're going to car of the future next year, so all these parts are going to become redundant. So I have a sneaking suspicious that, you know, the commercially prudent thing to do would be to extend the life of everything you've got um, to not uh, be throwing a whole lot of new components at it right now. Understand that as the game changes next year. We'll take a break while we're still under safety car and come back and go racing live on 7. We'll overheat more easily. This brutal circuit at this scorching Western Sydney venue has already claimed three victims. Stephen Johnson, Shane Van Gisberg and Lee Holdsworth didn't get to start the race. And we're also down a medical car as well. Brett? Oh, Dick Johnson, you know what a tough caper this can be. I mean, you just think you get to the front, second front row of the grid and everything's going all right and then alternator fails. Yeah, well, whether it's the alternator or something else, I think the battery's collapsed or something like that, one would never know because we can't even talk to him on the uh, on the radio, which is probably a good thing, I would suggest, at this <laughs> point in time. But uh, there's always tomorrow, Barrett, so... Yeah, come back tomorrow, Dick. Bigger and better. One would only hope, mate. All the best, mate. Good on you. Cheers. Some good news for the drivers and fans alike. That's Merchandise Alley that stretches straight through the middle here. Temperature's dropped. Yeah? 35.7 now. Oh, good. That's good. Safety car in your lane. Green flags, green flags. Thank you, safety car. Important restart here. We said before there were too many gaps. They've all been reminded. Tim Slade on the back of Will Davison. And much better in the middle of the field there in terms of restart quality as they run down Australia Avenue into Turn 1. Greg Murphy's done a great job. Just saw the back of the Pepsi Max. Commodore is 11th. He's done a really good job coming from uh, 19th. So he's the biggest winner of the first segment of this race. Wind Cup qualifying in 14th position, now jumping up to 7th. And his teammate Craig Lowndes hasn't fared quite so well. He's down in 18th. Remember that Craig qualified in 16th, so he's been bobbled up a bit in some of the action. And Roland Dane has been on the wall part uh, up 
down pit lane. Talking to V8 supercar officials, not sure what it's about yet. It's interesting to watch them on this restart, all go in search of clean, cool, fresh air after being trapped behind each other on the Peter safety car. What Roland was blowing about was the safety car going too slow and the conditions being so hot that the engines would overheat. So Roland was prompting Damien White from Bert Supercar and Frank Adamson as the category technical manager to get the car to go a little faster. As Wing Cup dives down the inside of Moffat at turn nine, good pass. Takes him up to sixth. He's right on the limit too, but he, uh, you can see from the body language of the car that he had absolutely nothing left under brakes. He dived at the apex and got round there cleanly, no lock brakes, so nice positive move. He's determined to march forward. Remember, the V8 supercar doesn't have a fan in it like your road car. It relies on airspeed through the radiator to cool the fluid in the engine, keep it at the ideal operating temperature, so when the airspeed drops on the car, the temperature goes up. And it's very bad here in the traffic. In fact, it's not an overly hard place on brakes, brackets, unless you're behind other cars. And then if you're stuck in under the back of other cars, and so much residual heat from the preceding car, it just flares the brake temperatures enormously. So Slade's decided to take the fight up to Will Davison straight away. They've broken away a little bit too. This top two from Russell Ingle and then Alex Premier and Michael Caruso. And by the way, Michael's putting pressure on, on the Frenchman as well to get that spot. So the two GRM cars running inside the top five. Alex is done that very good time in the first sector on this lap, trying to defend. He was a couple of tenths quicker than Michael. This is a great battle looking rearward from Will Davison's car and the roller coaster ride under brakes into turn nine. Reynolds looking to try and repeat the move that he saw Wind Cup pull effectively, but he needed it closer. Winterbottom does make a good move on Murphy. That's for position 11. Here's the battle for the Fujitsu boys that we were talking about there a moment ago. Quite a queue of cars here. And Murphy was pretty professional then, nearly. He could see Mark Winterbottom coming down the inside at turn nine. He gave him room, didn't try to fight for that. Wing Cup now does the fastest lap of the race so far, a 30.88, slightly faster than Will Davison with a 31 neat. One thing, the water on the road earlier in the day and these incredible high temperatures and big humidity are doing is they're really hurting lap speed. That has a bit of a benefit in one respect, whilst you're down on tyre grip, road grip, you also uh, get an improvement in fuel economy because you, you're not running nearly as quickly. And, uh, so that just adds to the whole story of the strategy. Just gives you a little bit more flexibility in some respects. Looking back from Michael Caruso's car to Jamie Winkup. He has a bit of unfinished business here. He was never just going to come here and trundle around and take the trophy at the end of the weekend. He's not that kind of guy and he's not in that kind of team, but he is yet to win a race at this circuit. His best finish here is fifth. So it'd be nothing more than Nothing better for Jamie Winkup than to put an exclamation mark on the 2012 championship for something that he hasn't done so far in a spectacular career. What has been interesting for me this week with Jamie, that Mark and I have had some interaction with him a couple of times, different media activities, and well, really for the whole week, was just far more relaxed than we've seen him normally at this event where he's had a lot of pressure on him. So he's having fun out there at the moment. It always means a lot to any race driver in any race at this level. But without the pressure of the championship weighing heavily on him, he doesn't have to worry too much about the consequences. So he's having an enjoyable car race, having a crack. We'll try and make some good moves. He clearly wants to get this whole bogey track thing out of the way and demonstrate that it's not reality. It's just the way things have worked out. But he also knows deep in the back of his head that if he does pull a move and it's not a good one, it's not the end of the universe. Exactly, and the best example of that was turn one. I mean, he was five abreast, up the inside, four wheels off the road, down to make that initial passing uh, manoeuvre on uh, lap one to, to gain five positions. So your example is absolutely right. Great slide there for Steve Owen out of turn four, right out sideways, good catch. There's a little bit of a catch too. The front wheels getting a little bit tangled between Fabian Coulthard and Dean Fiore, and that will that's be the a reason. miracle if Fiore ends up and not touching those tyre bumps. And that's the reason why Steve Owen had the big slide, because he was trying to round them up, and he had to go out in the dirty side of the racetrack to be able to do it. 
And when we say great, of course, it's great for us to watch. If you're in the driver's seat, it's terrible because it murders the lap time and you're all sideways. Frosty down the inside of James Moffat. This is for position. Gets him. James just covered a little. Jason Bright wants to buy in. This is turn nine. It's pretty lively there with Murphy and Bright just in behind also. Michael Caruso now has done the fastest time to the second sector. Will Davison on the, on the prior lap of lap 13 to 30.47. Slade's now gone slightly faster as Courtney and Moffat. You can see the contact at the bus stop at turn six and seven. It's quite a good move, an opportunistic move there from James Courtney to be able to sneak down the inside. Not easy to do in that spot because you've got to sneak around the high-speed left-hander at five. The car's unweighted. You've got to really pull it up in an awkward manner to be able to turn right. And he did it from the shallow side of the road. Yeah, and I reckon another really clear demonstration of the way Jamie's going about this meeting. We saw it in qualifying with that strategy that, that didn't work for them. But you know what I really loved about it? Jamie, Adrian Burgess, Mark Dutton, his engineer, the uncompromising desire to succeed, to be at the front, and they threw the dice. And uh, you've got to love that about this guy. Your boss wasn't that thrilled about it. <laughs> so to him afterwards and... Uh thought the better plan was to stay out there on warm tyres and the wet track and just keep blazing because that stage the game was about getting into the shootout. But you're right, you have to take those risks sometime and you've got to have a go and every now and again you can not pull up the right numbers. And, and that's a good point, Neil, because that was the smart strategy was to get, just get in the tent. They didn't want that, they wanted to bang the thing on the front row and I like that bit. They don't add. <laughs> <laughs> So, as Michael Caruso with the blue lights on continues to hound his teammate, there's a pretty juicy battle going on between Will Davison and Tim Slade at the front, not to mention the fact that Wing Cup is now ready to have a crack at Caruso, but Tim Slade's just been chipping away over the last couple of laps, and Davison has responded with the fastest lap of the race to extend the lead out to 0.7 seconds. In the course of the last 3.4 kilometres, it was as close as under half a second. We're going to stay with Jamie Winkup for a full lap. Have a look at the visibility and the way that when you are hooked in behind another car, the drama's attached to not hitting the fence. There's no room for error at this place. It's one of the most demanding circuits on our tour. And have a look down here at Turn 5. This is very narrow and very fast. We all remember that spot. In the wet. They're in the fence. They're all in the fence. <laughs> <laughs> that was quite remarkable. All the championship contenders, all parked. It was just extraordinary. I've never seen it before. Being topped today by the medical car, though. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Doubt we'll ever see that again. <laughs> so what's the gap at the front? It remains 0.7 in a second. And Team Vodafone are about to start activating down there in pit lane. Two drivers from Sandown and Bathurst are also here this weekend. Warren Luff and Paul Dumbrell, Bathurst champion. And Excellent driving in terms of second, forward, second on the championship, Mark Winterbottom, who came in here 63 points clear of Lowndes, is doing the job that he needs to do, staying clear of car 888. Winterbottom's in ninth, Lowndes is in 14th. And you just wonder at which stage will Jamie Winkup pull the trigger here and try and have a crack at Michael Caruso and then Alex Premer. But Will Davison, after starting on the front row of the grid, has control of the race. He's having a fascinating battle with his Ford counterpart, Tim Slade. I'll scorch you here at Sydney Olympic Park. Back after this.
Welcome back to the Sydney Telstra 500 where Mark Winterbottom has just done the fastest lap of the race. The first man to go under 1 minute 30. He is in ninth position. Our race leader is Will Davison over Tim Slade by just under a second. Russell Ingle, who started sixth, is in third. And it's Alex Premer, Michael Caruso, Jamie Wincup, David Reynolds, who's been on a charge, James Courtney, Winterbottom and Moffat make up our top ten. Murphy, got a problem. And he's testing the steering there, so he's concerned about the stability. There's something's broken according to what we just intercepted there from Murphy. He was testing the steering of the car there, like what's going on. Straight in, straight in, nice and careful. It was a good drive. Prior to that, he gained seven positions, and he was putting a lot of pressure on Bright. So, as we said at the start of this race, this circuit is very hard on cars, and it's got a front steering or suspension problem. As Wing Cup now has got by Michael Caruso, so he'll be applying pressure now to Alex Premer for fourth position. Yeah, so great drive going by Wing Cup. Gained nine positions. Davey Reynolds, 11 positions. Mark Winterbottom, 16 positions. So Winterbottom now with the fastest lap. We just saw that before with a 29.93. And this is the pass. Straight down the inside at turn nine. It's a great passing spot because it's a very difficult braking area. And oh, here we go. Wall and Dalberto are in the fence. This is the little zone at the next corner, which hey, is turn that. 10. Uh, you okay, mate? Get on it. Get back on it. Let us know if the car's okay, mate. And that's Adam Debore, and that may have come yeah, as a consequence of being with Murph there somehow. How's the car, mate? Was it a big hit? Are you OK? That uh, right rear door was already off Tony's car, by the way. Oh, he's turned the wall around and then uh, tripped over the front splitter on that thing on the way through. Here is again from the other angle, so David Wall on the left. And... Uh, that was the Salberto's fault again that, with that and one. He'll, he'll cop another drive through for that one. And then Murph had to come to a complete stop as David Reynolds came in too. I saw it come up on the computer in the background. So they're going to... Larko's on the spot. So they're actually uh, having a long, hard look at that thing at the moment underneath. And when they put the stands under it like that, you know that it's serious. So safety car. Yeah, bent steering guys for David Reynolds. They're working on it. It's about to get busy your way, Moritz. Yeah, you see Slade, <laughs> barely able to turn it there. He actually made ground, though, on Dill. Yeah, there, Wilbur. Mate, you've got to go around the Techno boys. Go around. You've got plenty of room to get straight. Coming to the stop on the mark. Stop on the mark. We'll fix that mirror for you. This is going to hurt the Fujitsu guys. They were very close together. And Caruso behind Premer is going to have to park up. You see this stacking all the time. We know... Gonna You've got to do it, basically. Going to watch the exit. Going to watch the exit. There'll be enough gap between Davison and Winterbottom. Go, go, go clear, all clear. There'll probably be enough gap between Winkup and Lowndes. Good job. They've got him out a long way ahead of Tim Slade here. Massively. So Slade was right on his bumper, effectively, and he's uh, he's dropped a spot. And there's the Fujitsu car parked up. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a, as you described it. That's going to murder. Michael and there's Lowndes, but he didn't have to wait that long, Lowndes. So this is going to be a good gain for Winkup. It is. He pops out behind Slade, ahead of Ingle. Yep. And the two Fujitsu cars, one of them has now gone through, and that's Alex Premer. Yeah, so that's um, that's made the passage easier for Jamie Winkup. It's an easy way to deal with the Fujitsu cars, and Michael Caruso will be, uh, and there's nothing he can do about it, just be so frustrated by that. It's just, unfortunately, that it's, the, as I've described before, the lesser of the two evils. If you stay out on the circuit, it'll hurt even more. So he got two free positions then. So Davison, Slade, Wing Cup, Ingle, Premer, Courtney will be the real race position, as you can see on track still. Mark Winterbottom, who didn't come in. Dean Fiore, and Mike Patrizzi. Those three cars are on track behind the safety car. The rest are, or have stopped or are stopping. So that's uh, Garth Tander. They're just they're sitting there with that car idling at the moment. So they're just watching engine Okay, Wally's coming out now. Okay, he's got his boot down. Okay, clear to go on a drop. It's so weird. I'm not sure what they were looking at there. Okay, it's, we it's need obviously... to do that to make sure we get to the end of the race. Ah, uh, door. The door on uh, Jamie's car. Has he opened that to actually ventilate, or has he got a yep. problem? We'll come back and answer that question in just a tick. Running your 
car for, for most of the race. Safety cars increase in speed to 120. Expecting to do one more lap for this lap. They're going to uh, go to restart for the first. Ready for a restart right now. Mark Winterbottom, who did not pit, leads the field. Same st story for Dean Fiore. The real race leader is Will Davison, who resumes that position. There he is, fourth on the road. So Tim Slade, then Jamie Winkup. Before the break, we saw Winkup with the door open. And yeah, it was just to keep cool as we went to the break and shut for the next, uh, next turn. No dramas for car number one. He's just keeping his cool with 53 laps to go. The safety car interventions have uh, stretched this first fuel range moment, this window for those that have not stopped. So Winterbottom Fiori, Patrizzi, uh, he's actually uh, came in. He started from pit lane and then he came in and did a top up. So he's been out of sequence with everybody else. But the, the top two guys will be able to run for a little while longer than our originally predicted figures. So they'll be in probably in about half a dozen laps or thereabouts. So Campbell. So that was the voice of Damien White in the background talking to the race director. So Damien's the sporting and technical manager, also the start of the V8 supercars. So there's another black flag, no surprise we call it. Alberto's role in the incident with David Wall. So we saw Wing Cup make that ground in the pit lane. It's a consequential strategy and a good stop from Triple Eight. Then the second part of that is we saw him get very wide coming out of turn four on the opening lap, the restart. This is Wing Cup right in behind Premier. He'll probably give him a little push into pit lane. <laughs> probably. Here we go. Just a little push. Standard procedure though. And here's the second drive through for Tony. Guys, Tim Slade's uh, stop was a little bit slower than expected. He had a problem with the left rear wheel. The crew just couldn't get it off. Garth Tan has got an alternator problem. During that stop, his was a little bit longer because they wanted to put a fresh battery in to try and give themselves every chance they could. And they also couldn't shut the boot properly before they got him away, so... It was a knock-on effect, but thanks for that, Brett. That was Greg Murphy out of the car there. And Murph has driven very well today. That was a good opening segment of the race. And as we said before, this can be a pretty cruel circuit. So another car down in the streets of Sydney Olympic Park. There's Davison right behind Slade. 
Winkup, Ingle. And this has put Winkup back in the pack again. This is, yeah. And one of the things we always say, track position is very important. And although it was a great move and they did get a couple of free positions in that pit stop, it's going to be pretty hectic in the spot that he's parked in right now. So the safety car interventions have worked nicely in the story from Winkup working his way up to the front. And now, as you can see, the margin between him Mark Winterbottom, who's, who's the leader, technically, but he's going to stop in the not too distant future, and wind comes only four seconds. Oh, Russell Ingle. Saw him bump that in qualifying, didn't mm. we? That was the spot he gave it a hit. That'll actually hit enough that, as you said, in qualifying, that actually hurts the, that one then. It's not just a little bump, it's actually a wheel bump. And it also pulled back Russell from his initial charge on uh, Jamie Winkup from the restart. He's now back into the groove. He was right up on the rear of, of number one, and that's what you're talking about, back in that fighting zone again. With somebody like the Enforcer breathing down your neck around here. Now, Will's going to wake you up. Sorry, Paddy. Will's going to be a bit cautious here because he is effectively the leader of the race, and he's just going to have to be a little bit patient to make sure that he gets the move done if he's going to be able to do one cleanly and easily. He's looking down the inside now at nine. Michael's giving him space so that it's pretty much textbook. Nice job there for Will. The patience is going to be a very important word for the day. He's up behind uh, Dean Fiore now, so that's Will to third. On board now with Russell Engel right up behind Jamie Winkup. Yeah, look, there's a garage full of uh, Stone Brothers racing drivers down here. We might just try and grab a real quick word with you. Sorry to interrupt you there, buddy. Shane, um, first of all, looked to me like you got tucked in a bit tight on the world wall there with uh, Delberto in that incident. Yeah, I just got shuffled around the outside and, uh, uh, you know, Tony's a good guy. I get along well with him, but that time I don't think he wanted to share the road. But uh, he pushed me wide and then, um, you know, we're just in the fence there, so... Bit of a shame, really, but I uh, hope we can get on with it tomorrow. And, mate, I've got to ask you about the medical car. I mean, I spoke to the driver down there. It would appear a little embarrassed to me, but what happened there? Oh, it's on TV now. Um, uh, just the steering was uh, quite bent, but I thought we'd get back to the pit lane, and then it just snapped left. But uh, days of thunder, they say, go out there and hit the pace car. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I, I got close. <laughs> Very funny. Well done, mate. We'll just quickly try and grab a word. Uh, Lee Holsworth, mate, I know there's one place you don't want to be standing right now, and that's right here. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, we didn't even get to do the warm-up lap. Sorry, mate, I'm finishing my cookie. Yeah, I'll hold that. <laughs> <laughs> work. Um, yeah, we had something fail on the grid. Um, sounds like an input shaft or a diff or something. So, you know, it's uh, been an up-and-down year, and that was one of the lows. So maybe we'll get a high tomorrow. <laughs> what's Ripper. It like? I'm going to go there and see what's on the food platter. <laughs> what's, it, what's it like, like a ripper? <laughs> Oh, Slade. Uh -oh. Slade. Trouble on the racetrack here. Slade's getting a shuffle. And look at this. Got Winkup mixed in the middle. Ingle on the inside. James Courtney as well. It's all getting a bit ugly. There's been a lot of drama there because Premer's now out of sync with that. And Courtney, big beneficiary of the, whatever the move was that put Jamie back. So there's a bit of a story in the tale of Winkup trying to get by. And Ingle. Now past Winkup, the same with James Courtney. So good move from both those guys. That had the potential to be really nasty. Yeah. We'd be peeling cars off the wall, but somehow they managed to do it and not do any damage. So watch Slade here. OK. So we caught the tail end of that, of, of Tim just gathering his breath there and getting it all straightened up. But then that shuffled the pack a little, didn't it? Just changed everybody's pace. Just get from the other angle. We're expecting Mark Winterbottom in any tick of the clock, by the way. So this is the reason why Jamie ended up just dropping back because Russell got underneath him then at the final corner. And just uh, spread eagle the, the gang a little bit. That was a sorry boys from Jamie Winkup. Said sorry boys. That manoeuvre obviously cost him some spots. There's also lots of talk out there at the moment about temperatures, not surprisingly. So, for example, Alex Premer in 33 is eighth at the moment. They've said you're just going to have to search for a lot more cool air. So he's in that train that I spoke about before when you're tucked up underneath a, a bunch of other cars. It's not just the car in front of you, it's the cars in front of you. There's an enormous amount of heat. You can see it there in the background of the shot. 
just billowing out from the back of the cars and it really bumps up the water temperature the oil temperature the gearbox temp the diff temp brake temp everything starts to fly driver temp driver temp was the, probably the most perilous one um the thing about winter bottom in this strategy neil was not stopping is that everybody's still got to do their two stops to get home Winterbottom has put some great laps together. He's got a six second lead now, just on the fastest lap of the race, 29.67. So, although it's an alternate strategy and he's gonna to have to stop for longer, it might work his way. He's out of the traffic and going fast. Oh, he's gave you bad news for Will Davison. He has tapped the wall and he's broken his steering. You see the steering arm bits here in the FBR garage about to go into Will's car. Will will have to come in in just a moment. Wow. Uh, so he's third on the road at the moment. It's given that wall a nudge, and there's the steering arm standing by. Obviously still rolling along there okay at the moment. I wonder whether he's just put them on standby and warned them, or whether he is actually going to come in. Well, I think two things. You said that you need to be patient. He put a really good pass on. Here we go. There's not much room here. Ingle and Courtney are in the fence. Teammates, they've just hit. Steering arms are broken. That's broken the front of Ingle's car. And Courtney definitely went in the fence. So a lot of damage. Oh, Moffat down the inside of Ingle. A lot Have of you damage. You've got a flat, you've got a flat. Pit, pit, pit. Four times. Spare, spare four times. Spare four times. That's happened a few times this year. They're mates, but they, well, they get on the racetrack and they headbutt each other unnecessarily. Well, that was silly. Those two guys. So Davison in with damage. Yeah, so you said it before that he mark. needed to be patient. He's obviously made his own mistake as he was trying to get towards Mark Winterbottom. He now fumbles around to get the car into the garage to be able to change that steering arm and there's a lot of damage to the left hand side of this car it hasn't it hasn't gone on yet no, it's, not, it's, it's actually not on the pegs it's more damage than that because front mud guard and front air dam wouldn't allow them to put that clear on, drop. wheel on clear, clear. it's rob star talking who is yelling out to get some tires and this is the replay down the inside is ingle it actually Pushes. started one corner back. It did. And then as, as Russell went to the right, he almost grabbed Jamie Wincup along the way. So very clumsy. Remember at that stage, Russell Lingle was effectively in third position. He hasn't been on the podium since 2009. Qualifies inside the top ten. He said to us at the very start of the day, like he always does, the qualifying's the hard bit, the racing's the fun bit. Well, that'll work fun out of that one this afternoon. So Mark Winterbottom now comes in to pit lane with a 10 second lead. Got you there Frosty mate, we're going to do a tear off as well and uh, tweet that mirror for you. Very important okay. stop this one. Stop on the mark. So they're just running standard strategy. They should easily make a two stop. Off, this being the first. You'll be clear when you drop. You'll be clear when you drop. Here when you drop. Go, 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 go. So just under 18 seconds, Penrite graphic shows that pit stop time. And he will emerge. We'll just have a look very closely as to, we've already seen the dramas for Dave Reynolds. So he's right back at the back of the field. Yeah, Neil, it's a good pickup, mate. Standard strategy. And after the irony, uh, yeah, well, it is an irony after what we talked about a lot at Winton, where they went far from the standard strategy, didn't work for them being very conservative and good work. Yeah, so they've just started using your whiteboard, Larko, with a full load of fuel, and they've run it to the end of that load. Stuck some uh, fuel back in, just tick some tyres on the way they go. Now, this is going back a moment a little further to the Courtney Ingle thing. So James dive bombs down the inside at nine. Russell hangs in there, but then the two of them force the issue at ten, and it ends up in a headbutt. A bit unfortunate. And, and then as... Russell jumped to the right. He almost grabbed Jamie Wincup in the process. And that damage, as you said, Matt, has cost Russell Ingle any chance of finishing up near the pointy end somewhere where he was doing a really good job, qualified well, and was certainly in contention. So that's really affected his run today. Courtney's got the eyes on today. He's been very aggressive for a couple of passes, big pass into turn six, a really good pass into turn nine. And he's now behind Prema. We've seen Alex get involved in too much drama this year, so they'll need to be careful, those two guys, because they're both in line for a very good result, Prema and Courtney in third and fourth. 
So just to reinforce the point I made about the standard strategy and the point that you picked up on a little moment ago there, Mark, is that with Frosty, at this stage at least, they're just running standard. So he's done one stop, he's got one more to go. It's likely that the way the others are looking at the moment, they've got at least another two stops to deal with. That's going to put Frosty in a pretty strong position a little bit later in the day. We've got a lot of racing to come here. But because of the way in which Winkup and Slade, Premier and so on, have played the game so far, they may pay a little penalty a bit later on. But there's a lot of stuff to unfold here before that becomes folklore. A, a, guy, I didn't, I, a guy I didn't want to have a talk to today uh, was you, Murph. But I tell you, I was laughing watching you laugh at Courtney and Ingle together. You love that, mate. We shouldn't laugh. I mean, it's not very, it's not very nice. I'm sure their debrief tonight's not going to be too sharp. I wouldn't want a camera in their, in their uh, truck, actually. More importantly, mate, uh, what's the gig with your car? Oh, just another mechanical failure. The steering's failed, so uh, we're out of another race. And briefly, mate, uh, any word on uh, next year? We're going to see Murph around. Oh, uh, you'll see me around some stage. I don't know where or how or when, but um, uh, no, nothing, nothing full time lined up uh, go at this stage. All right, mate. Well, I hope you put something together. Cheers. Obviously very disappointed, Greg Murphy there finishing up with the Kellys this weekend. A long time Holden driver over a long period and been very, very successful. And was doing a very good job today, as I said earlier, we drove the car very well in the opening segment of this race. As Courtney now down the inside of Prema, these are the two guys we're just referring to. And well done, no contact. Gianni just got stopped though, didn't he, James? Got away with it at turn two. But Prema was smart then, he didn't fight. You've got to do that proper, That's, we said this all year with him. But he's just got involved in too much drama and that was clever. Richard Holway would have been on the radio to him, would have said over the phone, just don't do anything weird, be cool. He's only inches in it. Every time we look up, we catch a glimpse of Jason Bright in that picture. He's now fifth. And he was quick in practice, so there's actually good form in that car. Fastest man in practice three, he was ninth in practice four, 11th in qualifying, so he just missed out getting into the 10 by tiny margin. So there's some pace in there. He's got a little bit of a lower back issue. His seat wasn't quite quite right at Winton. And uh, when your seat's not quite right in these cars, it you know, really becomes a problem. You float around in the seat with the load in the car, and the braking in particular becomes an issue because you rotate your hips in an awkward manner when you're applying the brake all the time. Wind cup. More than just a mirror for him, it was a right rear rub. So he and the man on screen, Tim Slade, stopped on lap number 19. And we're now on 32 out of 74. So it's Slade, then wing cut behind them. James Courtney from 11th up to third. Alex Premer. Is getting pressured by Jason Bright. James Moffat, you could put him in the Jason Bright category as well. Every time we look there, he's involved in something. It was the same in qualifying, and it's the same in this race. Craig Lowndes, John O'Webb, Steve Owen, Michael Caruso make up our top 10. We'll also be watching Mark Winterbottom, who won the last race here last year.
That's our mega wall. It's got it all covered here for you at Sydney Olympic Park. A bit of activity in Gary Rogers Motorsport. The team boss is on the prowl. Race control has been activated quite a few times today. Our curb cams capturing the view from down low. And you can ride, of course, with your drivers. And we'll do that right now with Michael Caruso. I was going to make the remark just before the break. Um, when you look at Slade and Windcup having stopped on lap 19, and we know that the fuel window is about 26 laps, remember when they did stop, it was for the third safety car intervention. So they get a little bit of fuel range back from that. But uh, 19 laps plus 26, if you use standard numbers, gets you to lap 45. In other words, it doesn't get you to the critical lap and down the inside here is Lowndes on bright. Remember Larco's whiteboard, you need to get to lap 48 or nine in order to fill up and get home. So what's really the interesting thing here is whether or not the winter bottom strategy, the standard strategy, if you like, is going to play into his hands from position 14, running standard, or whether or not the way in which, say, for example, Slade, Wind Cup, and uh, even to some extent Courtney, how that plays for them and whether they'll get home. Now, what will, what will be helping them is the possibility of more safety car intervention, plus the warmth and the low lap speed. You know, so they're, they're running around a bit slower at the moment. And if we were looking at their numbers in the individual garages, you could, you'd have a fair idea. But I don't know that anyone's going to give any of that information away freely. So uh, they'll be desperate in the case of Slade, Windcup, Courtney, to try and get to that critical, call it the Larco lap, where you fill up one more time and get home. I'm not sure that they're going to make it at the moment. We saw the numbers for uh, John O'Webb, who's just picked his way through the field up into the top 10 and we also saw Will Davison still in the garage. If he does not finish this race, that will make five straight DNFs at this circuit. Hasn't finished a race here since Sunday in 2009. End of the day for Fabian Coulthard, guys. They've got a broken spring in the throttle. Samantha Armitage, who went for a hot lap with him yesterday, is going to be devastated. She fell in love with V8s and probably Fabian as well yesterday, her new favourite driver. <laughs> So, too, didn't she? she did, she loved it, didn't she? Um, John, o, John o Webb and Steve Owen, they've both made 15 positions, so they've done a really good job. James Courtney, nine positions, and Wing Cup, 12 positions. So they're the real movers and shakers from the start of this race. See the little uh, indication across the roll bar just above Michael there. So if you have a radio fader, you can use the indicators for communication. So left indicator is yes. Right indicator is no. Different teams have got their own codes for that, for lights flashing and indicators on and off. And there's a little redundancy system in place for everybody in the field here to be able to deal with the radio or a comms fail. And sometimes not even just a fail. Sometimes the comms are just difficult because of trees, buildings, interference. It's not as easy to communicate as you'd like to hope. Some damage on the back of car 21. You can see the tyre rubbing on the guard. A couple of times there you saw the blue smoke come out of the back of David Wall's car. This, you see there. Yeah, just in here, I can see the boys under the back of Will Davidson's car. He's come back into the garage here. They're working on the rear anti-roll bar. I think they've got a bit of a problem there, but Tim Edwards tell me, tells me they're going to, you know, effectively they're out of competition, but they're going to make sure they finish the 75% of the race to get some points, but doing that, uh, they're going to try and achieve some stuff here for tomorrow. It's extraordinary. He's run a bad luck here. He started on pole position both days last year, ends up with two DNFs, starts on the front row of the grid and leads the race most of the first segment, if you like, and looks as though he's heading that way again. Wilson security car, as you mentioned, Scafi, with um, just that rear tyre rubbing, it's actually the rear right that's rubbing against the guard and causing chaos for David Wall. So let's go further up the field to Craig Lowndes. It's Alex Primer behind him. So this is fourth and fifth guys that we're looking at from the chopper there at the moment. Some margins to contemplate. Big battle here involving Rick Kelly and John O'Webb. These guys are just on the edge of the tent, so this is a good manoeuvre here. Rick Kelly up to ninth, and John O back in, in tenth place, having tasted success here in both development series in years gone by and also in his V8 supercar main game career. So a lot of chat on the radio also about rolling out of the throttle, the same old fuel-saving message that's going to these guys that I mentioned before who have got to try and find a way to get to the point where they can fill up once and get home. It's not going to be that easy. That great chopper shot that we had on 
picked up Lowndes, who is in the last lap or so just got by Alex Primer. So Primer now fifth. So Slade, Wink Cup, Courtney, Lowndes, Primer, Bright, Moffat, Owen, Kelly, and Webb, top ten. There's some really good drives amongst that. You've said that about Jason Bright and James Moffat. Steve Owen, very good. Rick Kelly now coming towards the front of the field. Michael Caruso has dropped some positions. He qualified well. He's back in 11th. Mark Winterbottom on that alternate strategy, or the traditional one that Neil explained, is currently 14th. One of the features of his performance today is he's got pretty much free track. So when he was out by himself, he, he made great lap speed and got that gap out to six seconds. He's now down in 14th, but he's five seconds away from the next car, which is Blanchard. So there's some good aspects to that. It means you can run your own race. And Courtney's on for a season best result so far. His best to date has been the fourth at Bathurst. Remember, he had a bit of warfare going on there with the tyres. They just told him a moment ago on the radio, you're going well with the fuel. We need a little bit more, though. So it's the same old, you know, give, give them a bit of encouragement, but can you give us more? So he's rolling around there in third. He's, he's got a Team Vodafone sandwich either side. Who's that that just went straight Caruso. through there? Caruso. So uh, we'll watch him with interest. So Michael's just outside that top 10. Carl Ryan is the one sneaking underneath. And it doesn't look stable at all, does it? I wonder whether he was also looking for going in search of some steering problems. Michael Caruso started a dart and weave. Only four guys inside the top 10 have managed to stay there. Tim Slade, Alex Prenner, James Moffat, and Rick Kelly. Reindler now moves up to 11th. He started 21st. Gary Rogers looking on. This is this great shot. This is the train station. When you arrive at the Sydney Olympic Park facility. And what a famous precinct this one is. The final three corners of this lap. 3.42 kilometre racetrack and Australia Avenue all the way down this big roller coaster ride into turn one. Start pretty straight. Seventh place, James Moffat, Norton entry. He was one of the guys in the wet part of qualifying that was right at the top of the tree, he was making the most of it. He's found real pace in recent races, strong at Abu Dhabi, strong at Winton. And leaving this outfit after tomorrow night on the move next year, new team for James Moffat and for Norton. Great shot, this is turn five. It's interesting just hanging on to fourth gear there, Scapey, so you can hear the rev limit of 7,500 revs just protesting in the background rather than grabbing the extra gear. Some guys we heard earlier in the weekend actually using fifth very, very briefly to sneak around the corner. It's hard there because you've got to, you, if you do grab fifth, the car continues to accelerate. You've got all the unloaded weight on the left side of the car and you've got to stop it and then point it in the other direction through the bus stop chicane through six and seven. And James just deciding not to bother with the extra upset by letting it continue to accelerate. So it's the train station on your right now, coming up to turn 11. Where we've seen some drama through the weekend. There's two double lefts to lead onto the straight. Wing Cup continues to apply the pressure to Tim Slade. It's only 0.39. Everybody's dramaing with engine temperature. They're all trying to conserve fuel at the same time. The landing roll bar adjustments, looks like he did both of them then, the rear and the front for Jamie, so a little tweak just to get the chassis to his satisfaction. Racing as quick as they dare, but at the same time, I'm sure trying to also manage to a fuel number. They want to get to about lap 48 or 49 to fill up and get home. We're on lap 40. Got more pace at the moment, Wind Cup, hasn't he? He's just getting closer and closer. That's wall in the foreground. Just with Gary Rogers watching the front end of this race. And Alex Prem and Gary, at the start of the year, it was a bit of a gamble bringing the Frenchman over, but he's sitting in the top five. He's come good at the end. Well, he has. I mean, it's not the end yet, but certainly he's doing a re really good job. I mean, he's never driven here, and it was a gamble, but uh, it's been a tough gig for him, but he's kept his stiff upper lip, and, you know, I'm not easy. So, you said it, Gary. Well, clearly, you know, hey, we got spots to support. You've got to do the right thing. So let's hope and pray he keeps going along as good as he is. Good pitch for a drive next year. 
we'll be announcing our drivers in our categories at, uh, in the first uh, few weeks of new, the, the, the new year. I look forward to that, Gary. Good on you. <laughs> Caught me there. Very good. <laughs> Almost got him, Brett. <laughs> <laughs> so Alex Premier currently in fifth. His best performance this year, therefore his career best in V8 supercars is 13th at Simmons Plains, which was our second event of uh, 2012. I reckon Gary's got a future in politics with that answer, don't you think? <laughs> we'll tell you in a couple of months. Yes, I hear your question, but I am ignoring it. I'm going to answer with whatever I'd like to say. <laughs> now, Wind Cup's just searching for a bit of cooler air here. I don't think there's such a thing out there at the moment, but certainly cooler than under the back of Tim's car. So he's just moving the car around a little bit at the moment to try and ingest some better numbers. They can break temps and engine temps a little better, but he is just millimetres closer. It's a good test for both of these guys. They're at the, they're at the hard work end of this race now, so you're really going to feel it. doesn't matter how efficient the cool suit is, this is going to be very hard physically. Remember last year at Queensland Raceway, Crompo, when we said it was the weekend that Tim Slade came of age. It was the weekend that Craig Lowndes went berserk and just won everything in front of him. But Slade went with him the whole way. Finished with a brace of seconds. He comes here today, gets his first career pole position, and he is literally in the driver's seat to get his first ever V8 supercar victory. Back after this. Right, mate, you need to carry on here and see if it's okay, or do you need a pit? Okay, there's going to be a little bit of rubbing on that left front. We'll just... It's impossible to comprehend just how hot it is inside the cabin or cabins of these cars. Well and truly up over 50 degrees. They've been going now for an hour and a quarter. And talk about going. Jason Bright gets into Alex Prima and it was almost going, going, gone. For some reason, Bright decided just to go full throttle at Prima. Down here, Prima has to take evasive action. He then redressed the speed because he would have been facing a penalty. Bright decided to have another go at it. Carries way too much speed. And car 33, that's the replay of him just darting through off the right-hand side. Then further down, car 33 goes, hang on, I'm getting out of this. Car eight goes into the wall. Yeah, so Alex ran wide at turn one, and that was what made the initial contact. There was, there was a mess at turn two between them. They all 
clumsy their way through these chicanes. And there they go. And then uh, it's turn eight, bright straight ahead. As soon as you wide there, and you, you can't get the car tucked into the apex. Gee, it's slippery. And we've seen every year we've been here, and this is the fourth. Um, we see people come unglued there. It was almost like Jason Bright, a man of so much experience, was just in a hurry to get it over and done with. It just frustration, and maybe that's you know, what I'm talking about. They've been going up for over an hour and a quarter now, or just on an hour and a quarter, they'd be fatigued mentally. Up oh, and bright in, so it's ongoing, and that'll trigger a safety car. That'll come at an opportune moment, and what will happen here is that will let the guys off the hook that I've been talking about, so they'll be in, they'll get their fuel, the safety, safety car, car, pause and flag. Safety car pause will protect and flag. Safety car those that are on the... On the strategy like yeah, Slade, right. Wind Cup, Courtney, etc. Jason yeah. Bright, he got caught with Prema. He caused the first part of the Bright thing with the contact on the way out of here. So that's in the turn one into the fence. And then they had a drama at turn two and turn three. And then there was a massive drama after that at turn eight. So Jason didn't need to do that. He was on for a good result. And now the field is in. Now watch because. I don't know about roll it's making the rear worse, I think. So watch these two teams now, the okay, focus... I, I don't know. They, <laughs> that's interesting. They had uh, a slow stop with the left rear before for Tim Slade. And this is the refuel to the finish. They'll also have to fuel save yeah. a little. That's Lowndes parked up, so Back he's stacking. Oh, sorry, go. no. It's go. Wing Cup. So Wing Cup has allowed Lowndes to go past. Wing Cup has decided to pull over in pit lane and allow Craig Lowndes to go past. Remember, in Championship World, Craig Lowndes is fighting for second in the championship. Team Vodafone are clearly right there aiming for a 1-2 in the championship. In your right, go, 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 go. The guy that made unbelievable ground was Courtney. Courtney was just, he, he closed straight mirror, up onto the back right hand mirror. of the two leaders as Wink Up and Slade. Webb now pushes Owen down pit lane. Go, go, go. Mark Winterbottom now getting his stop done. He's currently 12. Wing Cup now has been serviced, so he goes back out. He resumes in 10th position. So Caruso, Slade, Lowndes, Courtney, Moffat, Prema. And this guy, Mark Winterbottom, is 13th. So Lowndes, the beneficiary there, third. So in that little battle, they came in with 63 points separating them in the battle for second and third in the championship. So a free kick for Craig Lowndes from his teammate. Wow. So I don't know if Crusoe stopped. I don't think he has. No. no so he's stopped on lap 14. Correction 19. So Slade will now have this battle with Lowndes that we previously spoke about back in 2011 it was a different finish that time around so he's got a familiar company to the end guys this is amazing the temperature is so hot today something has happened in the cabin of david reynolds car his shoe has melted they are standing by with a replacement boot for david reynolds which in this stop they will attempt to fit so somewhere in this stop they're going to open the door reach in rip one melted boot off dave reynolds and replace it with a fresh boot. i tell you what will be going on there, Barrett. I actually happened to stick my heat gun on a few of the driver's pedals were on the grid, and I saw between 37 degrees, which was Mark Winterbottoms, and I saw up to 60 degrees centigrade because the, the, the heat comes through the engine, through the metal floor, no carpet, no insulation, up through the steel pedal. Some guys run a groovy little insulator behind there that works beautifully. Some guys don't. I don't know what Davey's got, but it would be certainly hot enough to melt the boots off the bottom of your feet. <laughs> Whatever he's got, it isn't good enough. <laughs> exactly. I heard on the radio, and he was, he was saying, my boot's broken, my boot's broken. So he's had to take a glove off so that he can actually make this all happen. This will be quite <laughs> funny. We've never seen this. There's been a few unique instances here. So Mark is going to jump in Actually, the sole's coming off it as well. He's trying to do the laces. The sole's coming off that boot. So guys, Dave Reynolds has just pulled in. The door's been opened. The netting is down. He's got his, it's his right boot. They've got the leg up. <laughs> They're now trying to somehow, without Dave unfastening himself from the seat belts, they're trying to get the right boot off and put a new right boot on. Can you just see where they've got a double knot there, Barrett? <laughs> it's, it's a bow, Scapey. 
Yeah. I have never seen this done before. Single knot will be faster. <laughs> Coming for new boots, mate. <laughs> David just said, oh, new boots, mate. Trade it up. Serious. <laughs> <laughs> it had to happen well, today, we, didn't we, it? We, you, know, you hear the boys on the radio saying we're in for new boots, but taking a bit literally in this. this guys, this is a very slow boot change. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there she is. Oh, she's the ordinary. Right, so you'll be clear to go when you drop at the moment, OK? Still clear. This is how he stepped on some chewing gum. Yeah. This is not going well, Brett. No. They're really going to have to work on this for next season. <laughs> They've got to practice this. Yeah. Letting themselves down on the boot change. Look at Davey just looking on. Just guys, just just have a quick look at that. That is the boot that's come off. Look, completely delaminated, <laughs> busted, burnt, Brent. melted, gone. Can you confirm or deny that Davey Reynolds is currently getting a pedicure? <laughs> he could be. Oh, that's You're clear to go. <laughs> okay, clear to go. Looks earthly like the boot you had on last night's cake after a glass and a half of that light beer. <laughs> <laughs> Wobbly boot. <laughs> so there's Jamie just peeling into the dead area in the pit lane there, just waiting for a moment, and that's his teammate Craig Lowndes wheeling on by, so then Jamie resumes normal business and gets in the queue. Oh, this is the most bizarre event I reckon I've ever seen. <laughs> We've seen some unbelievable things at this, uh, this site. Well, it's known as the premier state New South Wales for sports and major events. And if it is worth seeing, well, it's on in New South Wales and it's on this afternoon. Sydney.com is the website to go to to check out this fabulous city. At this time of the year, it absolutely sparkles. And for everybody having a difficult run in their race car this afternoon, the harbour is going to be such an appealing thought <laughs> to jump into. That's right. Because if you're anywhere outside the top ten, all you want to do is get out of there and get in the water. Go to the northern beaches. Go for it, mate. All right, so Michael Caruso is in charge of the field. He will have to stop, though, to get to the end of this race. Look at the restart. Well, that's gap there. It's supposed to be five car lengths, so it's, uh, some massive gaps. Look, look at this. And it's Slade, then Lowndes, Courtney Moffat. Alex Prema holding down that top 10 position. Steve Owen, John O'Webb, there goes Rick Kelly. Now they're all starting to bunch up tighter at the front of the field. Forget about midfield, they've dropped them. What's going on there at all? Yeah, it's, it's unusual. And one of, the, one of the reasons is the rule better gets enforced. So if you can, it will. Yeah. But it's but, but just to disadvantage your own run. I mean, there's 100 metres between cars. So let's remember that Jamie Winkup was effectively second battle against, well he was second in the battle against Tim Slade. Before those, that last round of pit stops, he pulled over in pit lane to let his teammate through. So Craig Lowndes is now the man who's tucked in behind Slade. Where some action may come from now is Courtney Moffat and Prema. Three guys that we've seen battling hard throughout the year and all three of them on for a very good result here today if they keep their head. I was looking forward to see what was going to happen in the Wind Cup versus Slade pit stop battle. So we were denied that unfortunately. Yeah, it's an interesting call. They talked about it pre-event. No secret of the fact that they're going to work as a team in the championship. They're farewelling Vodafone after a hugely successful partnership. There'd be no better way than to end this era at Triple Eight than to finish 1 2. So they're making their intentions clear. Look at James Moffat now fifth. I think to keep in mind, boys, you'd, you'd be a brave person to bet against any further safety car intervention. But just got to remember that we haven't actually clicked into the zone where you can theoretically get home on a tank of fuel, which means everybody's going to have to be in massive conservation mode. Oh, that was loud. Against the fence again, very hard. It didn't just knock the mirror off. In fact, he's only just made turn eight. He knocked the mirror off, but it hit the rear guard on the fence. So this is down Dawn Fraser Avenue. So 
lap speed is a little bit slower because of the heat that may be okay but I, I think you'll find as this race continues to wear on so long as it's green you're going to have people having to be very very careful with how they manage their sucrogen bioethanol burn here and how much fuel they use we use a number of about three litres per lap teams work on kilos Russo in so the real lead of the race Tim Slade resumes Position one, so Slade, Lowndes, Courtney, Moffat, Caruso in the pit. Prema, Owen, Webb, Kelly, Ingle back into the top ten. Winkup, winner bottom, 11th and 12th. It's a rear sway bar, stabiliser bar being changed in terms of, yeah, it's a, it's a weird rotation style system that they've got. You see some of the guys have got levers, they've actually got a little winding mechanism. Like they're You're doing as much work as you normally see him do, just standing at the back of Michael's car, spectating. Look how tight it is now. Provisionally between second and third. So that gamble or that move to get Lowndes further up the field by Team Vodafone puts him into second in the championship. But with 26 laps remaining in this race, It'd be pretty silly to say it's going to finish the way it is right now. There's still a lot more to play out. What we've also seen over the last couple of years is HRT have very good fuel economy. Of those front three cars, probably the best fuel economy. So Neil's point was absolutely right. They've all stopped before you could genuinely make it home on our critical lap number that Mark Larkin explained at the start of the event. So they're all going to have to conserve fuel. Clearly, if another safety car comes out, then that is not a, as big an issue. But Slade, Lowndes, Courtney, Moffat, Tremor, all will have to conserve fuel. Steve Owen's also in that battle. He's done a very good job. He's up into sixth. So he's emerging as one of the league contenders also. I know it's a long way from being concluded at this point, but we're also staring at the possibility of the first non Ford Performance Racing or Team Vodafone victory for 2012. There's been a lot of people in the pit paddock been keen to see some variety. A lot of fans have been talking about it as well. So with HRT in third, Lucky Seven and Stone Brothers first there at the moment, we, we might get a random and slightly different result here. Lowndes will do his best to make sure that he spoils that party. Well, they've just been greedy, haven't they? they have. 28 races between the two teams. So Moffat's dropped off the back of this battle a little bit. He was right up behind Courtney before. Black flag car two. Speeding in pit lane. So Gar Tander will have to serve a pit lane penalty. Apparently 18. So Slade's getting some pressure now. Lowndes, he, Lowndes will be actually seeing the car 22 Toll Holton Racing Team Commodore emerge onto the back of him. So he'll be then saying, I need to get up and attack the back of Tim Slade's Lucky 7 Falcon. And as you can see, that gap has closed up. Top three cars now all line a stern as they swoop down. It's fantastic pit straight. So you heard in the background there, that's pretty much the number we need. They're talking about fuel. It's the same for everybody because they're all tied to the same strategy for those that stopped when the safety car came out. This is a little gamesmanship going on here, perhaps as well. So you've got winner bottom in 11th at the moment, wind cup in 10th. We're looking from Jamie's rear bumper, and uh, no doubt he'll be uh, working pretty hard at making sure he keeps Frosty in that position. Amazing how it pans out, yeah. isn't it? Now gives Wing Cup the number one spot to try and hold off winner bottom and keep him as far away from Lowndes as possible in the battle for the second in the championship. Tyres tearing on the road through turn eight there. Not sure which of those two cars, but they were just chattering across the road surface. Sorry, sorry, mate. Ingle's looking pretty pacey there. I didn't see him before, but he's come back up into ninth position after that drama with Courtney and has really climbed onto the back of uh, Rick Kelly 
in the last couple of laps, so his pace is good, so they've obviously repaired that car properly. I was concerned before that the damage may have been a little more than we first thought. These blokes are only seven seconds off the lead of the race, by the way, so you can see, in fact, that's a perfect illustration under the sydney.com signage there on the run into turn one. Just precisely the gaps, that's what the seven seconds looks like. There it is. So they're not that far out of touch with the guys at the sharp end of the field. And uh, Dado's just asking Jamie to do the big roll off into two. What he means there is just roll out of the throttle, come back to zero percentage on the throttle before you apply the brake. Just stop pumping fuel into it. So he's driving to that fuel conservation strategy that I spoke of before. And Winnemore looks strong, doesn't he? The yeah. car looks better than Jamie's. He's got really good mid-corner grip. He's got really good flow going. Doesn't look like he has to work the car as hard. I thought James Moffat, if he didn't touch the fence on the exit of seven, then he went seriously close to it. Caruso just smashing through the turn two curb there. These guys are the walking wounded, Will Davison and David Reynolds, but Davey's all gripped up. New right boot. Yep, new, new shoe. Go. Watch me stand on that throttle pedal now. That is bizarre. Two bizarre things in one day. Medical car KO. Davey gets a right boot. Didn't see that script coming. Oh, I thought he was going to bump him then. That was very close. That's Ingle peeling yeah. off out of uh, position 11. And this is... So even more was the work from Mark Dutton to Jamie Winkup then, meaning stop burning fuel. And remember, because they all stopped at the same time there, if they've got that level of communication going with Winkup to make it home, then Lowndes is going way faster and he's up the road a little bit. Mm. So everybody will be in this position. And oh, that was very close, right out sideways. He actually gave him a bump. He definitely made contact. Mark Winterbottom then slid the back of the car all the way and ricocheted off the back of Wing Cup at turn two and turn three. Pushed him offline. You can see there's a bit of anx anxious teamwork there with Jeremy Moore looking down. Matt Nilsson from FPR in the bottom of screen. They are going to park the Tander car, by the way. So he's down in 19th at the moment. So they've got alternator dramas and then pit lane drive through penalty for the speeding. So they're just parking the car too. Here it is again, the replay down at turn two. Check this out. Oh. So remember that uh, Jamie's apparently driving to a pretty serious number here at the moment. Looks like Frosty's got pace on him. He's going to get frustrated. He's lucky to get away with that without slapping it on the wall. It's all crossed up. Meanwhile, Tim Slade has Craig Lowndes 0.4 of a second behind him. And where's... Dougal saying to Tim a little bit more again. So this is going to get very interesting because the drivers don't want to clearly relax the race speed. They want to hold their position at the moment. But we're a long, long way from home and they're going to have to roll out of it or they're not going to make it. Well, Neil, let's try and find out. I want to pin the question on uh, a good mate Adrian Burgess here. He'll tell us everything. We know this is going to be tight, mate. Um, we can hear the comments of the drivers. Just how tight are you going to be on fuel? Uh, yeah, we're going to be very tight. That's obviously uh, both drivers are saving fuel at the moment, but yeah. And the sorts of strategies, sorry, Adrian, you're doing to, uh, we can hear about rolling off the throttle. What other sorts of things are they doing? Oh, we're just taking it easy mid-corner, just being careful with the fuel everywhere we can. Definitely rolling off on the way into one and two and a couple others. We're just, yeah, doing everything we can. It's going to be bloody tight, but we should be all right. Well, just watch the telecast, mate. I'm going to go and talk to the competition. We'll see what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like that. Because Adrian's got nothing bit. else to do. Fair bit, they'll be doing the same thing. <laughs> We're looking forward from the front bumper of the Orcon Steel Ford Performance Racing Falcon of Mark Winterbottom, and that's the rear bumper of Jamie Winkup's car. There's turn nine. Sydney Olympic Park railway station to the right. Coming up here now to turn 11. Second gear. Seen a bit of action there over the years. Last two quarters here, it's a very tiny little straight short shoot into the final quarter. And that kerb on the inside really upsets the car. See all the... All the scars on the concrete wall down the right-hand side for those that didn't quite get the margin right as they picked the throttle up on the exit. 
Lucas has won two and three on the road. James Courtney, by the way, hasn't been on the podium since Sandown last year. Steve Owens starting to move around, also having a look at his teammate James Moffat. These fellas are battling for fourth and fifth at the moment. Both cars from Dick Johnson Racing, the VIP pet foods in the case of Owen, the Norton car for Moffat. Moffat on the move next year. We haven't got a clarification of Steve Owen's position for next year. And it's Jonathan Webb, Alex Premer still inside the 10. Rick Kelly is next in eighth in uh, Wincup and Winterbottom. Mark Winterbottom just said, oh sorry, Mark Dutton just said to Jamie Wincup that you either conserve or we've got to do another stop. Meaning you either press on and we've got to come in or you've got to conserve. So it was a very factual, very harsh dis discussion between those two guys. Down here with West McDougall's um, Timmy Slade's engineer. Now, I'm going to go and talk to Adrian Burgess in a minute, mate. I haven't spoken to him yet. Just wondering... No, I have, actually. <laughs> uh, we, we, no, we have. Um, we know they're tight on fuel. Obviously, you guys are the same, and how are you going to manage it? Yeah, I mean, we've got uh, good experience here last year. Same thing on Saturday, so... Um, Tim did a really good job last year. We're just at the front. We're not going to give it up. We're going to stay at the front and uh, do our best. And where's from your point of view, what sort of strategies can Tim be using to save fuel out there? Uh, all sorts of things. We're helping him with... Uh, fuel trim switch and uh, just like what you talk on the commentary, rolling out under braking zones. It's good for it here, long straights, slow corners. All right, mate, I really appreciate you listening to my advice because no one else does. Good job and good luck. Great to see Timmy up there. That was a positional move for Rick Kelly to seventh on Alex Premier. Oh, and go straight ahead. Turn two. Oh, seriously close to contact between those two. Winkup's mixed up in this and so is Winterbottom. That was very messy. Alex was having problems with the rear of the car when Larko was having a chat to Wes, who's sliding around a lot. It's amazing how things can ignite quickly. And by the way, we're going commercial free to the end of the telecast, folks. So you're going to enjoy the back end of the first part of the Sydney Telstra 500 and look at all this unfolding. A little tap two for Alex Premer from Mark Winterbottom. This could have been absolute disaster. The rejoin, watch this. Rick Kelly comes back in. Prema is... Oh, oh, did a good job. He did inches. a really good job. Prema, to miss him, did a really good job. Oh, that's Richard Holloway. Look at the reaction. And honestly, he had no way of knowing what Rick was going to do when he re-entered the circuit. He did a fantastic job not to fire Rick Kelly in the fence then. Rick will be angry because we've just gone through all the process and the hard work of making a good pass at turn one. It's on again here now. Oh, no, and nearly tagging Moffat. Webb's in here as well. So these guys, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Steve Martin looked as though he had enough car speed to get on the inside of James Moffat down there at turn one from our chopper shot, but it was different down roadside. So John o. Webb. There's the watching brief behind them. Moffat fourth. You have to go back to 1988 to find the name Moffat on the podium. One spot away. But currently the battle's coming from behind. He's not in a position to start a charge at James Courtney. He's got to shake off Owen and Webb. Back up to the front. Position remains the same. Tim Slade in search of his first ever career win. Got Craig Lowndes hunting him down. Oh, a couple of cars. Oh, it's Moffat and straight Owen. At nine, they've gone straight down there in their little bit of bippo and arguing for position. And they haven't been able to get it done cleanly. So there's definite contact and even more as Rick Kelly tries to thread his way past and can't do so. Getting lively again. Wing Cup will take advantage of any little any little further mistake. Kelly will go past. So that puts Rick up into fifth. Wing Cup will easily sneak past here, so James is limping there at the moment. I think the balance of the car was great anyway prior to all this. I think it was him in the background talking about Ben steering. Ian Walburn, his engineer on the radio, responding. So here's what happened at turn nine. So uh, that's just messy. And there is lots of ag 
lots of ag between the guys in that pit. Paul Morris on the radio to Steve Owen. Frosty up the inside now and uh, puts a clean move on James Moffat. So Steve Owen dive bombing down the inside. Didn't look like he was going to be able to pull it up and turn it. And then James turned in, made the contact. Back to the front of the field. And the bit that staggers me at the moment is these three guys are going to struggle to make it home. I can't understand if they're going to make it home or not based on how fast they're going, Crompo. So Tim Slade trying to hold off Craig Lowndes. Take one more break, then we'll go commercial free all the way to the finish of this one. laps to go here in the second last race of the season this is your top three Tim Slade Craig Lowndes and James Courtney but Alex Premer who's been running inside the top 10 all day on track for his career best finish is now in pit lane yeah. now they're giving him a drink yeah they're getting uh, they're hydrating him so he may have an issue we're out of it now so he was off the road down here, and then uh, while we're in the break, they brought him in, stuck fuel in it and tyres, and they're attending to him at the moment. Damien White's up there from V8 Supercar. Maybe he got to the bottom of his drink bottle. I, th I think he's done. I think they're, they're actually calling the medics there. So they've, they've got a few problems there. We couldn't understand why 33 came in. They decided to fill her up while he was there, give him some fresh tyres, but clearly that's a driver issue. It has been extraordinarily hot today, edging 40 degrees. Down their track side, it's over 40 degrees, and inside the cabin, it's closer to 60 plus. Call for the medical delegate, Dr. Carl Lee, so they'll have to bring him down in. Trizzy off the road at two, and it looked like James Moffat was mixed up in all that too. And there's Will Davison, by the way, back out there. And, uh, steering breakage, yep. Okay, the Frenchman down, is please. suffering big time. Good 
images. And uh, once you lose all the body fluid, particularly if you had any kind of uh, cool suit issues, you can't rehydrate quick enough in the car, and it's, it's quite a sickly feeling. The water feels hot. And, uh, you can't get it all sorted again. So Alex is in good hands. What's happened there? There's... So it's changed. Yep. So we've got Lowndes in control from Courtney and Slade while all that was going on. And uh, this may be strategic on the part of uh, 47 because remember they lost a race here last year. No, it was oh. a mistake at nine. So lock the rears, made a mistake, a critical error for Tim Slade while we're in the pit lane. He did gather it up, fortunately, and that changes the order here. So it's now Lowndes, Courtney, Slade, one, two, three. Little error at turn nine there for Tim Slade. Craig Lowndes has won six races this season. He won here on the corresponding day last year. So he'd be the only guy, if he pulls this off, to put together multiple victories here. We've had six races and six winners. James Courtney's the other. If he could climb That's over Lowndes, he could sure become the first up. multiple winner. He did a Sunday, lap, uh, Sunday parade lap on uh, back in 2009. So Patrizzi, Moffat, Ryan Luck, Crunch. That's what happened. 91 into 18. So this is at turn two, and that's Steve Owen cruising by in the background there as well. An on board view of it. That was definitely Michael Patrizzi's fault, that one. As you can see there, not going to make it. Still straight, he's missed the turn in point and runs into the back of James Moffat. So we've seen so much drama here at Turn 2 over the weekend. Our slow-mo has caught all the action, qualifying and racing. You can see there the Norton Falcon being spun around. Rick Kelly is up into fifth position. So Craig Lowndes, Courtney, Slade, Webb, Kelly, Winkup, Winterbottom, Owen, Reindler and Dalberto are the top ten. Rick Kelly, good job to be in fifth to see they haven't normally this year had very good fuel economy so when everyone's battling to make it home it'll be interesting to see what happens with Rick they've all basically stopped on lap 44 now 63 of 74 so Michael Patrizzi's going to get a black flag pit lane drive through penalty for his problem down at turn two there dive bombing James Moffat so he'll tour the pit lane shortly takes him out of 13th position Great piece of road. It's the end of Dawn Fraser Avenue at turn nine. It's a great passing spot because it's a short shoot. So you've got to take the risk to get in underneath the guy, but then you've got absolutely no room to pull it up and go for the right hander at 10. Even though he's out of it, uh, Will Davison down in 21st position, and there's uh, Frosty coming in. They're talking about uh, brakes on Will's car. Will says he's just got no, it just won't stop. There, Frosty. We're just gonna do, just gonna do fuel on your car. Yep. Just gonna do fuel and no tires, right? Stop on the mark. Stop on the mark. Everyone got that, boys? Fuel only. This is a quick stop, Frosty. Remember, they're all forced into that stop when right. Bright went into the oh. wall, which is earlier than everybody go, wanted. Go, go. So when these guys are doing this, go, you've still got to say, what are the front guys yeah. doing? Yeah. Yeah. I reckon they're rolling the dice. There's going to be a safety car. That's what they're doing. It's a big punt, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, just a quick update on uh, Alex Premier. They're just uh, taking him off. He has been conscious the whole time. I've been watching uh, the doctors are, uh, attending him, so uh, we'll report in later. I'm clearly, I'd say he's dehydrated. Uh, it's a tough gig out there, we know that. Yeah, it's uh, an hour and 48 minutes worth of racing right now. Trying qualifying as well under these conditions. We hope that uh, Alex is OK and can come back tomorrow. It's cool at a mile. Here we go back down here at turn nine. Fifth and sixth. Still pestering Rick Kelly. Did you hear that big roll out of the throttle then at the end of Dawn Fraser Avenue? We'll hear that a lot on board with these guys now. So at the end of the main straight here, they'll do it again. And 
then up into turn two they do it there and they'll do it down into turn five instead of being on the rev limiter just come out of the throttle nicely same up into turn eight and a game where we saw it turn nine James Courtney to your list of drivers who will be coming home on fumes, running very tight in the tank for JC. Yeah, I think they're all in the same boat. So Courtney on for his best result of the year, even if he does roll out of it now and doesn't chase the victory. Um, it'll be an important point grab and a nice way to finish the year for what's been a tough one for him. He was really unhappy with the car in practice yesterday. If he could break the stranglehold of the team Vodafone FPR winning streak this year, then it would give the Holden Racing team its first victory since last year at Bathurst. It would give James his first win since Abu Dhabi last year in his 100th event. The numbers would stack up nicely. But this one's all about fuel from here on in. That includes the possibility of the safety car, because that will play a critical role in determining who gets to the end. So it was a 30.9 for Lowndes, a 30.7 for Courtney, a 30.9 for Slade. Webb did a 32.1. Kelly and Wincup are in the mid-31s. And Owen and Reindler into the low 31s. Tony Delberto, after a fraught race, actually got himself back inside the top 10. He's ninth at the moment. And then James Moffat, despite also being in the wars at various stages, is 10th. It just must be such a tough time for the drivers, edging towards two hours in the cockpit mentally, physically worn out. And now you've got to play this game, this fuel conservation game, when every instinct as a race driver tells you to attack, attack, attack. Run you through this field. Lowndes, Courtney, then Slade. Davey Reynolds, as we know, is out of sync. So there's position four, John o. Webb. Then back to Rick Kelly and Jamie Wincup. Wincup in sixth. A bit more distance back to Steve Owen. Then Carl Reinler. There's Tony Dalberto. He's had a few trips through pit lane two, in fact, serving penalties. And James Moffat should have been further up the list. He was tangled up with Steve Owen. Tim Blanchard. Here comes Michael Caruso. That was Taz Douglas, who was also out of sync. So that takes you down to position 12. And then we find Mark Winterbottom 13th. They're all strung out right around this precinct. I hate doing this. But Berger, sorry to bother you again, mate. I hate doing this. Um, Craig Lowndes, how close? Oh, we think we're safe. Oh, do we're, uh, we're more worried with this one than that one. Yeah, we heard uh, Dono saying there before you're not going to make it on current uh, trim. We'll see you in a minute. We're, we're very close. I mean, he's given us some big numbers now, which we've demanded. He's got it while we're in the pit lane. So it's one or the other. You can't do both, as we've, we've seen. The other car's good. This guy will get out. Ever thought about a career in politics? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Where would he work, Largo? <laughs> sort of half got one, don't you? <laughs> anyway. The sun is shining down here at uh, turn nine. It's an overtill right beneath it. Beneath us, a Coates Hire chopper follows them around the train station. Pavilion on our left-hand side, which at Easter is where you go in and buy your show bags. In December, you go in and see the transporters and the cars, the V8 supercars in our host studio for the weekend. It's quite a unique sight. The run down here to turn one, spectacular pit lane complex, corporate areas as well. Quite a dramatic fall away in the road by the time you get from turn 13 down to one. And then the charge along the bottom part of the circuit towards Olympic Boulevard. The merchandise alley has been uh, well frequented this weekend. Here we go, turns two, three, and four. So Lowndes leads them through. And Courtney looks to me as though he's just happy to get to the end in that position. 
I mean, they really, nobody's really got enough gas to have a good crack. ANZ Stadium on the left. of so many spectacular sporting venues and this Sydney Telstra 500 is carving its own folklore into this precinct it always delivers something unique and it certainly has today the big question is who can get to the end who can get to 74 laps with enough fuel to greet the chequered flag will it be one of our top three Will they cough and splutter and run out? Gee, the amount of rollout on the throttle then for yeah. Jamie at the end of the run uh, <coughs> down into turn nine, excuse me, was uh, just a massive lift off. Huge, nothing like you do in qualifying. So he's sixth at the moment. As you heard when Mark was talking to Adrian, they've got to really try and sort out the numbers. So you won't hear it here in the run of the final corner, but when we get down to turn one, we'll just have a listen to how much Jamie rolls out. You don't hear the normal hard on the throttle on there. Give me those numbers, thank you. Now, so it's just hear it straight out of there. It's yeah. a big gap between lifting your right foot and then applying the brake. There'll be another one up here. So part of the fall now. And now, that's rolled out now. So it's a long way. That's 100 metres before the braking area, and he's right out of the throttle. They can do it easily in this next section. So this is out of turn four. A little slide, so he's on the throttle. But then he's just here. He can just come out again. Even with the down changes there, not as much throttle as you would normally use to come back two gears. And we heard before Neil made comment of this next run down Dawn Fraser Avenue into turn nine. A big rollout. Listen for this. And there. So all the way down through that last part before you get to the roller coaster, he's off the throttle. I want 50 for the next few to build a buffer. I want 50 for the next few. We're talking the smallest buffer ever. 50, please. Now remember, he only just got home on fumes at Bathurst. And it worked pretty well, but smallest number ever, and you can tell the urgency in Mark Dutton's voice. I was surprised in the run into turn two. It, it wasn't just an early rollout, it was yeah. actually a lift off. Yeah. So, no, 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 yeah. no, I'll catch you. Mate, five to go. We'll lose too many positions dropping back. Kelly and them will drop back later, mate. We'll, uh, we'll do that on the last lap. Just get me to the last lap, thanks. You can see the urgency on Mark Dutton's face and you can hear by that language that we've been listening to the communication between Jamie and Mark. And again, you hear that rollout, it's massive. Yeah. Slade's working the back of Courtney here, as I just noticed on the data, and there's the shot to confirm. So he's got close to the back of James Courtney, who's drifted a bit from Craig Lowndes. Lowndes looks like he's, he's just blazing along at the moment. It's hard to imagine why there'd be such a disparity between those two cars, but there is. So it could be just the way Craig's done his stint Look at this, Slade down the inside. Looks like he might grab him here. And he has easily. So James got the same problem. The only reason that could happen so easily would be Courtney lifting off early. So Slade resuming, trying to get back up the front again after having to relinquish a few laps ago into turn nine. He made that mistake, had the rear brakes locked. He sets off after Lowndes. Oh, he just hit the fence hard on the exit just then. That was a big hit. That was a big hit. You can see him just move the steering around a little bit. Easily done, isn't it, at the end of the day when the grip's low, the car's much lighter. 90 on. It's actually less than that, isn't it? But they burning the fuel down at uh, the rate of three litres a lap. And uh, tyres are down, so the thing's sliding all over the place. Throttle up a little bit early, it's so easy just to clobber that wall. So we predicted that Lowndes would be in the same sort of trouble that Wing Cup is for fuel consumption. And we said that Courtney was probably going to be the best of that front group. But as it's working out now, Courtney back into third position. Slade moves by. And Craig Lowndes keeps on pushing on. Their lap speed's about a second slower than they would normally be going based on fuel conservation. But still, 
Lowndes and Winkup, who pitted on exactly the same lap, lap 44 for most of the field, and Winkup in serious fuel conservation mode. So they start with just a little less than 60 kilos of fuel with these 75 litre tanks on, and they're getting towards the end of that now, so the rear of the car is a lot different in its feel and its behaviour to the way in which it started. Started the stint at least. Here's Lance. One minute 30.6, and that time then was matched to the thousand virtually. There's only four one thousands different between uh, Lowndes and Slades. So incredible. Two of them are locked on the same speed. 32.8 for Courtney, so he's come right out of it speed wise. Webb's done a 34.3, that's so miles away. Kelly 32.1, Wind Cup 32.1. So the only guys that are pressing on here at the moment are Lowndes and Slade. Noons has just pointed out 15 cars on the lead lap. The average at the end of this race has been 14.7, so it's the only thing that's been averaged today. It was a nice clean move from Tim Slade, but just seconds later, carries too much speed on the exit of turn 13. That was a big biff. So he won the last race at Winton, Craig Lowndes. He won the first race here last year. 49 is going to pit Steve Owen, so the VIP Pet Foods entry will be in. He's not going to get to the end on this load of fuel. And if Lowndes can continue and win, he'll not only become the first multiple winner on these streets, but also consolidate second in the championship. All good, mate. The fuel is good. We'll go to blue two. Blue two. It's all good news. It's all good news. Which is extraordinary when you think what's happening on the other side of the Team Vodafone garage. It just doesn't make any sense to me. I, I can't work it out. The speed that Craig is driving the car, they're talking to him very positively about it not having any problem at all. Well, Lowndes last lap was 29 Two laps to go, mid numbers, gap behind, safe, 4.27, massive lift off. So that's... Uh, well, hear the lift oh, off there, oh. the corresponding lift from Jamie to turn one. <laughs> I don't think it's going to come soon, mate. <laughs> it's going to be out of mate. We haven't been able to conserve enough, mate. Just keep doing what you're doing. We'll get to the end. P6 is good for what we've done this race. I wonder, I just wonder, because it's such a, a weird situation to have car triple eight with so much gas, so much to run, and car one, none. I wonder when they decided to flip them around in pit lane, did they keep Jamie Wincup there for the full time to fill him up, or did they just shorten him down a little bit because he lost a bit of time in pit lane? Yeah, yeah. well, Matty, Matty, it could well be something like that. I just peered over the boys' shoulders on both their computer screens, and both of them are using almost an identical amount of fuel at the moment. Um, so there's not difference out there as they're driving them now. It's happened during the course of the race. So Courtney's falling back into the clutches of Webb. So he's only... Uh, he's still third, obviously, but Webb now moving along in fourth. He's had to back right off. Webb, the previous lap, was four seconds slower than Lowndes. So Lowndes does a 30.96, Slade 30.58, Courtney 37.55, seven seconds, Webb 34.25. Rick Kelly 34.9, Wink Cup 35, five seconds slower than Lowndes. <laughs> so uh, that is a bit slower. Tim's still close enough to be a nuisance here, isn't he? He's going with him. Jeremy Moore just telling Lowndes that it feels good, just don't lose position. It's not bad advice when you're leading the race on the last lap. So Craig Lowndes. He's en route to his seventh race win of 2012. They came here with a mission this weekend to finish 1-2 in the championship. To claim a race win would be a bonus. They played a team game throughout this one. They played a fuel game as well. And Lowndes is going to clock up his 89th career win and become the first multiple winner on the streets of Sydney Olympic Park. Sydney winner! Okay. 
great stuff. Great job, Tim Slade. He's on the podium after starting from pole. It's on. It's on, all right. Lowndes now in second in the championship. James Courtney is trying and trying to make it. I think I can. I think I can. He's going to get around and get on the podium. Nice job, buddy. Nice job. P3. Nice job, mate. Great. Well done. He's back Crawford. Oh! That was the last piece there. There's a massive race at the end there for Wink Cup to get by. So he gets by Rick Kelly yep. and he almost got wet. Well. Yep. Good result after all that. Thanks, Dano. He wanted to know when he could put down in. the hammer. No, no, all good. Well done. Well done. He put it down on turn 13. So Webb in fourth. Great drive from John O. Webb. Wink Cup fifth. Then Rick Kelly, Carl Reindler, James Moffat, Mark Winterbottom, and Michael Caruso. Lowndes. Two victories now at the Sydney Telstra 500. Like I said, seven for the year. Look at this. Oh, push and shove. <laughs> that was close. There's not a lot of room there on either side if things go haywire. Great job, Tim Slade. Very, very good job over the weekend. First pole position and a great race to be right up there with Lowndes. So in the final weekend of Ford versus Holden exclusive, it's Holden getting the win. Slade and Courtney will fill up the podium and boy, will they be looking forward to that to get some hydration. Reindler there inside the top seven and James Moffat was always fighting today. So that's a great result for him to be top 10 along with uh, Michael Caruso. And you'd have to say that Alex Premier there in position 20, who's gone off to the medical center here would probably have joined them inside the top 10, but uh, the conditions here got the better of the Frenchman, while the circuit got the better of the rest of them. Look at all those DNFs. And Lowndes had enough in the tank at the end to be unchallenged. He started in 16. Back-to-back -back wins after doing a sterling job on Sunday at Winton. And they continue that role, Scafie. Nobody's been able to break through against Team Vodafone or FPR this year. It was a very good drive, wasn't it? Very good drive. And staggering difference in the fuel economy at the end there between Lowndes and Wink Cup. There's a lot of drivers complaining over the radio that they're actually in physical, there's some real physical drama and there a couple of guys are asking for medical attention. So the demand of a race like this in these conditions, very tough on them today. Yeah, and I'm not surprised. Craig Lowndes, congratulations. You pull out the big results right when you need them. That was a beauty. Yeah, thanks, Bruce. I think it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a credit to the team because obviously, uh, you know, I've got to say, I thank Jamie really because um, um, to be able to obviously uh, not queue in pit lane, you know, help me obviously get to where I wanted to be. We had a great uh, race with Slady and uh, now it's a credit to them boys. It's a shame that he had his little off, but uh, to all our guys, uh, look, thank you very much to uh, Levi and Chili back home. Hopefully they're having a good day because it was damn hot in there. How hard was it, Lounsey, today? Uh, look, it, was, um, it wasn't too bad. I thought it was, I was expecting worse. Um, but in that middle section, when all that, uh, just before that series of safety cars come out, my feet must have been 105 because they were burning my big toe uh, on fire. So uh, the pedal box is extremely hot. The rest of me is not too bad with this cool suit. Great win, Lounsey. Well done. Thanks, Brett. We move over to Tim Slade, who's had an incredible day. Uh, Tim, congratulations. Your first pole position and a great race there with Lounsey in the late stages. That's a top result. Yeah, it's a great day. Pole position and a second. Um, sort of kicking myself a little bit for throwing away there towards the end. Just sort of, it's hard to be in front and saving fuel and get all your markers right every lap because you don't have a, a marker in front. But I'll stop making excuses now. And um, yeah, that, that's great. You know, great result for the team. And yeah, I'm pretty stoked. Tim, enjoy what was an excellent result. Well done. Thank you. And uh, James Courtney, boy, JC, it's been a little while since we've seen you on the podium. Welcome back. That was gutsy. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been a long time between drinks, which has uh, been pretty disappointing, but it's, uh, it's good I finally got a podium this year. It's, uh, it's been a long time in my career since I've waited this long for it, but uh, it's a good one. The guys did a great job. I uh, started to get a bit emotional there at the end when I had to back off and let these guys go, but um, it's still good to come home in third, and uh, thanks to everyone at Job and Rockstar, Toll, Holden, they've all done fantastic jobs, and um, yeah, we're on the way back, HRT. You've done a great job yourself. Get up there and enjoy it, JC. Well done. Cheers, guys. First podium for James Courtney.
like he said, in, in a while, it's been a fair old hike back to uh, Sandown. So these, uh, this extraordinary heat today is really has really taken its toll as, as we thought it would. It's bizarre, though, to see Craig Lowndes. What a difference a wind makes. Yeah. Pops out of the car. Oh, so, no, it's fine. No problems. His car looked good too. That always helps. So the thing was working pretty well around here, and that just makes the physical and mental task that much easier. He's also very fit. I mean, he is he's very, very race fit. These guys have done a great job today. And you can see Lowndes get out, and it does make a difference when you land at the pointy end, a level of motivation and the physical aspects of today, you cope with those much easier. See Ross Stone and the guys walking in to congratulate Tim Slade. What a great effort for Stone Brothers in one of their last forward performances. What a day. The good news is we get to come back tomorrow and do it all again. It's going to be physically hard for a few of the guys too. They'll get a lot of work done tonight. There'll be uh, physio and a lot of massage, a lot of rehydration. Some of them just go onto the drip just to be able to just get it in there quickly and uh, get themselves back to a sensible body temperature. So the DNFs today, Alex Primer, Jason Bright, Fabian Coulthard, Greg Murphy, Stevie Johnson, who started from third, Shane Van Gisbergen, and Lee Holdsworth, who couldn't complete the warm-up lap today. So it was going on before we got underway. Time for the podium. Ladies and gentlemen, the Sydney Telstra 500 podium time race 29 of the year. And speaking for us today on behalf of our major sponsor, Telstra, is JB Russolo, the executive director of Telstra Digital Media and IPTV. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Uh, on behalf of Telstra, I just want to thank you all for coming today and for being part of another great edition of the Telstra 500 at Homebush. To the drivers and to the team, congratulations and thank you for a great season and a very hot race today. Uh, to those of you at home, uh, we hope you've enjoyed the Channel 7 coverage on your T-Box or on your TV. And for those of you away from home, we hope you've enjoyed watching it live and on metered on your smartphones and your Telstra tablets. Thank you again for coming today. This is how we connect with the V8s. This is how we connect with the fans. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. JB, thank you very much. And we now introduce the winning drivers for race 29 in first place for Team Vodafone, Craig Lowndes. In second place for Lucky Seven Racing, Tim Slade. Third place for the Holden Racing Team, James Courtney. And representing the winning team, Team Vodafone, is Nick Petrons. Making the presentation to third place is Roger Lindemann, the General Manager, Service Experience, Virgin Australia. Presenting to second place is Sandra Chipchase, Chief Executive Officer, Destination New South Wales. Presenting to the winning team is Gary Mulvey, Executive General Manager, Sucrogen Bioethanol. And back to make the presentation to our winner is JB Russolo, the Executive Director, Telstra Digital Media and IPTV. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2012 Sydney Telstra 500 Race 29 winners. So Craig Lowndes now one win away from equaling Mark Scaife at the top of the all-time race wins list. His 89th career victory today. And like we said, the first man to win two races on this circuit. So in terms of the championship, Wing Cup will collect the trophy at the end of the day tomorrow. But Lowndes has now leapfrogged Mark Winterbottom into second. There's only three points in it. Could have been a much better day for Will Davison. Started on the front row of the grid. Ends up in position 19. Another 150 points on offer, though, tomorrow. So this intriguing battle between second and third will continue tomorrow afternoon.